Action. Oh, uh, yeah, man. What's up, y'all? OG Billy Bushhead, legendary South Carolina rapper. Been around 25 years. Uh, this is my documentary. I hope it be educational and inspirational to the youth and, and for the people who truly know me. I hope that y'all can vouch and, and let people know that this is a true testimony uh, starting from the bottom and on your way to the top. Uh, born Billy Austin, Billy Wayne Austin in Gaffney, South Carolina, 1981, April the 23rd to be exact. I'm a bull, real Tars, you feel what I'm saying? My mom was a DJ, my dad was a DJ. That's where my love for music come from. I can, I can remember just sitting on a record player playing Freddie Jackson, Osley Brothers, uh, um, Teddy Pendergrass, and um, until I came upon this rap record, LL Cool J, I'm bad. I thought this nigga was the coolest motherfucker in the world when I heard this shit. Uh, still didn't really get in the rap. Yeah, I, I I was a sports lover. Uh, my role models was the three Mikes: Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, and Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a professional fighter when I was younger, so I studied a lot of Bruce Lee films. And I was a John Claude Van Damme fan, a Steve Seagal fan. I was a big Mike Tyson fan. I watched Mike Tyson film all night. My mama bought me a Mike Tyson Grady Knockout VHS tape, and all I did was look at that tape. And I had a Michael Jordan Greatest Highlights tape from 1991. I used to watch that shit all the time. Um, I guess by me being inspired by greats and goats, made me a goat. Um, I wrote my first round when I was 13, sitting in the living room with my cousin Trap. You know what I'm saying? We were really out here in these streets. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I told Trap, I said, Trap, boy, I could rap, boy, because I used to go around cracking on everybody, freestyling, but cracking. And everybody used to be like, well, that shit was hot. I can kind of say I invented battle rap because I used to just go around smashing niggas like, well, your pink shirt, your yellow boots, look at you, you looking fruit, and then everybody go crazy. You feel what I'm saying? My homeboy, Teddy Lil John, i never forget it. He like, but said, boy, you got a voice, boy. You need to rap for real. And uh, my cousin Trav used to freestyle with me. We used to be standing on the block and shit. And, and travel like shit, boy. This is what I want you to say. I'm too deep to go on and I'm too deep to go back. And he gave me that line and I was like, I'm too deep to go on and I'm too deep to go back. I guess I stay in my neutral zone, packing my strap. That was my first song. I put that hook together. He was like, what you gonna say? And I wrote the verse, I was like, deep off in this game for so motherfucking long. Over the years, shedding tears for my niggas who be gone. I was 13 years old rapping like that. So I was like, God damn, boy, you hard. My cousin Blook, right? He was in high school. He was playing football and shit. So Blook heard me rap. He was like, shit, I can rap too. So I was like, shit, we're going to be a group, Blook. We're going to call ourselves Deadly Rep. Because we were young niggas already knocking out old niggas and, and niggas our age. So we had reputations already, young niggas. So I, I say, shit, we're going to call ourselves deadly <coughs> reputations. You feel what I'm saying? Me and my first cousin, Blooker. So Blooker was always the nigga to save his money. I fucked up my money. I'll go buy me and got me a little 20 cent, go trick off in the village, try to fuck something. Blook saved his money. He bought a drum machine. He didn't know how to use it. He was like, boy, I bought this shit to make beats. And hell, he gave it to me. And hell, man, I sat in the basement all the time on that motherfucker, like, all day. Fucking up packs, everything, like, just wanting to make beats. I come to the block, just plug the shit up. My my big cousin Lex had a trailer in the middle of the hood. Shit, he let me set a studio up in that motherfucker. This was like 98, I was like 17. I dropped my first CD, my first tape out of that trailer on 4th Street called Street Scriptures. My name was PAC, 
Everybody thought it stood for Pac-Man, but it stood for poetry and crime. That's why I call myself PAC. Um, I was getting in trouble and shit, though. Even though I was fired, everybody listened to the tape. Everybody in the hood was loving that shit, because I was really rapping about the beasts and shit we was in. Every nigga I knocked out, every nigga we fought at the club, every nigga I smacked at school, I wrote a rhyme about them, everything. It kind of made me like the 50 Cent of the 90s, and that's how I got popular, because I would whoop a nigga ass and write a song about it. So, hell, my homeboy Billy Bam say, man, but I'm going to start calling you Billy Bussy, because both our real name was Billy. And they call him Billy Bam. We hung everywhere. He was like, shit, I'm gonna call you Billy Bushead. So everybody in the hood started calling me Bushead. Hell, I went down the road. I'll never forget it. Um, I was like, boy, I'm gonna use that shit for a rap name. Like, I can remember, boy, when nobody sent me nothing down that motherfucker, nothing, boy. It was just me and that motherfucker with a pad and pencil and a vision. Like, I was knocking niggas out down the road doing 90 day lock up, salt on pit with injury, seeping on the cement slab for 72 hours before them crackers even brought me a mattress or any fucking thing. Like, man, I can remember goddamn shitting in my hand, bro. Cause motherfucker didn't bring me no tissue. Man, I said to myself, boy, when I get out of here, boy, I'm gonna be Billy Bushead. Then nobody see my vision. So I got out in 08. I did 30 months. My own homeboy sopped me up. That was crazy. I did, I caught a five year bid by my own, my homeboy though. He didn't claim it. Me sticking to the code, I did my 30 months for another nigga dope. I got out thinking nigga was gonna look out. Ain't nobody look out for me. My homeboy Lil Gadney had a little studio side up in the bitch house all fucking. It was his cousin, he was like, shit, Bush, you can use my shit. So goddamn, the rap game was fucked up. Like, it was all kind of snap, naff, naffy taffy, fucking white tea. That snap shit was out. Soldier Boy had fucked the game up. I was like, damn, how the fuck I'm gonna jump out here and come hard? So I made a snap beat. And shit was cool, but it sounded like a girl track. And I got to saying, shorty got that water water, straight out that water bottle. So I'm like, damn, that shit sound all right. So I got the freestyle and the hook, and I, and I dropped the hook. And at the time, the bitch I was fucking, she was doing hell. And every bitch that came in there heard that song, was like, oh my God, Bud said, play that song you did. So... It's this local DJ, he a legend, called Snowball. Snowball used to come and buy weed from my man Lil Gadney. So me and Lil Gadney sitting up there at, the, at my apartment, he pull up. And I'm playing Water Wall. He say, let me get that song, man. I'm playing that shit tonight in the club. Yeah, too. So shit, I gave it to him. I didn't go to the club that night. I hit the block the next day. Everybody like, boy, we heard your new song in the club last night. I was like, what new song? They were like, that Water Water song. Man, Snowball ran that shit back four times. The bitches were going crazy. I was like, shit. So the club was open that night. I said, I'm going to go down here and see for myself. So I went down there, me and my old lady, we went out. Snowball played that shit again, boy. I'm talking about the club went crazy. And this time, they didn't know the verses, but they know the hook. So everybody sang the hook with the song. I'm like, damn. It's crazy. My first local hit was Water Water. So i like, man, uh, my cousin, Dirt Dollar. Shout out Dirt Dollar, my cousin. Uh, he was like, Bud said, I'm going to help you, boy. I don't want to see you go back to jail. He like, shit, I'm going to help you shoot a video for that motherfucker, and you can shoot a video for another song. I like, well, I got this song called Billy Got That Good. I did, too. He heard it. He loved it. We went down to the village, because I'm from I'm from 456th Street, but I was raised in the village, too. R.P. my Aunt Viola, my grandma Aunt Stella lived down there over 20 years, my Aunt Annie. So I was raised in the village, too. So I was like, shit, I want to shoot Billy Got That Good in the village. 
So I shut down the projects, man. My first video shut down the project. The whole gang even down there. Then when I felt like a star, my cousin felt like, yeah, pussy, you can do this shit. So I told everybody, follow me to the club. I'm shooting water, water video. Y'all, I throw the party that night. I made $66, $100. Like, fresh out of jail, off a of party, I won song. I bought a Jeep off that song. So you don't think you can make money off this music shit. Go on, you like, for real. I bought a Ford Explorer, black 22s, all water, water. I ain't do nothing but make 10 more songs just to put around that song to sell a whole CD. You feel what I'm saying? But I bought, I took care of a bitch forever off that like one song. But anyway, that was 12 years ago. Uh, 2007, I've been riding this wave out of water water for 12 years. What's crazy, why I, I dropped the song Water Water, it was, I had my best friend and my girlfriend at the time on the song with me. So, uh, fell out, I ain't gonna say I fell out with my best friend, but he moved to Louisiana, so we couldn't really promote the record, and me and my old lady were falling out all the time, so. I never got to push Water Water, but what's crazy, about three o'clock in the morning, I'm laying in the bed, R.P. my cousin, Butt Knife. He called me, he said, boy, um, Shanice, shout out Shanice, Ace Hood, baby mom. Shanice wanna holler at you, boy. I'm like, what you talking about? She like, boy, she, she say, yo, Gotti heard your song, he wanna holler at you. So it's like three in the morning, I'm thinking he lying. I'm like, well, give her my number. She called me. But it said, Yo Gotti want to holler at you. So Yo Gotti got on the phone. This was my first time really talking to a rapper. You feel what I'm saying? I had opened up for niggas, but never talked to him and shit. So, beside Mo Cream, Shakur, I talked to Mo Cream back in 2001. And that's another story when I get into the Thug Life part. Um, Yo Gotti wanted to buy Water Water. So at the time, I didn't really understand the business. He asked me what I'm doing with the song. I'm like, shit, bro, I'm pushing this shit. Like, I'm trying to get on. He like, shit, sell me the song. He like, I, I'll give you 10000 for it. I like 10000 like, me being stupid. Like, man, I write songs, and I freestyle this whole song. I pulled a soul that man in song for 10000 But anyway, I denied his offer. Uh... Water Water yeah. was a local hit still. I did a lot of shows off of it and became Billy wow. Bussett fresh out of prison. By 2010, that was 2008, 2010, I ran into this guy from New York uh, well, named Yada. He had a label named Black Bank and he had the infamous Lord Tariq on his label. Lord Tariq from Peter Guns and Lord Tariq. Uptown, baby. And, um, my boy Sean Slugs was doing some work with him and I was producing with Sean Slugs and they heard me and he was like, uh, boy, we might as well get on this black bank wave and boom, 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 fuck my man Yala. So when I first met Yala, he was real quiet. Lord Tariq and R.P. P.O., my dog P.O., R.P. Uncle Pop. Uncle Pop was doing all the talking. He like, boy, you the epitome of a Carolina nigga. We want you to fuck with us, this, that, and other. Boom, boom, boom. Yacht sitting back like, he just a nigga with me, not knowing that he was the CEO. So like three days went by, I see a white Tahoe pull up, it's Yacht and Slugs. Y'all are like, get in the car, my nigga. Nigga picked me up, took me to Charlotte, took me to the True Religion store, laced me up in the True Religion. I meant the robbing shit, bought me some J's, like, right, nigga, you doing a show tonight? I'm like, yeah. He's like, we finna go get tattoos. So we went and got tattoos. We all finna get Black Bank. Me, him, and P.O. Slug say, I ain't getting none yet. Y'all say, I'm getting mine on my own. P.O. say, I'm getting mine on my hand. Bust said, where you getting yours? Say, I'm getting mine on my head. Y'all nigga saved my life. They say, what? We got to see this shit. I got the tattoo on my head. I didn't know what I did, but I got a friend for life, man. I miss you, Yada. Yada went all in with me. So through Yada, 
I didn't know who I met. He happened to be Andy Stone nephew. So me working with Yada for a few years, Andy Stone heard some R&B music I wrote for my artist Lady. Shout out Lady, the first lady of Thug Life South. I write music for her and Andy Stone heard it and she asked Yada like who wrote that? And he was like, uh, Billy Busshead. And she like, Billy Busshead, your rapper? You like, yeah. So she asked to hear some of my music and um, he played for real and she went and stabbed it. Like, I got to meet him. I'm going to tell y'all what's crazy. At the time, I had just got married, right? And had two little girls. I already had a son, Rashi. I had two little girls, Israel and Jasmine. So I was running the studio and I was working at Burger King. At the time, I was working at Burger King. My boy Yada called me like, Bob, what you doing? I said, I'm at work. He said, shit, hell, come to Atlanta right now. My aunt want to meet you. I said, your aunt who? He said, Andy Stone. She want to meet you. So I called I called everybody. I like, shit, boy, y'all want to give me a ride to Atlanta? Motherfucker want to give me a record deal. I didn't know why she wanted to meet me. You feel what I'm saying? But I felt like it was a record deal with Andy Stone, and then it was y'all to call me. He wasn't nothing but money. So I like, shit, I need to get to Atlanta. So I called her, my homeboy, C. Jinx. C. Jinx, he fucked with Dane Grease and Wade Gang right now, but he was originally my artist. At the time, I was producing for him, and I was like, yo, Jinx, give me a ride to Atlanta. That's why I fuck with Jinx to this day. And uh, he came, picked me up for Burger King. I quit my job on the spot when he met Andy Stone. Andy Stone had the first lady MC with him, uh, Miss Sharon. Sharon. MC, MC, um, Sha Rock, I think. I can't remember her name. She was the first female MC. I met her that day. She was with Andy Stone, and they used to have this rap group together back in the 80s. And she was telling me about how she was originally a rapper and how she was from South Carolina and how she helped Lil Rue do his thing. But he ran off on her, and then she helped me. She promised, promised I wouldn't do the same thing. So I was like, man, you know I wouldn't hurt you. You know, like, word, like, I'm down with your nephew, so. Shout out Andy Stone. She acted as my manager for a minute. I landed on the show R&B Divas with her. That was my first national television appearance. I was on the TV show R&B Divas with Angie. Um, that was a dope experience, you know what I'm saying? I met. I met the beautiful ladies of R&B Diva, Monifa, a um, couple of them, I can't remember their name, but um, from there, we, I accumulated a relationship with Blue Frank, a producer from Brooklyn, but used to produce for So So Def and done a lot of work for Jeezy and other artists, and um, Nick Love, he's a big Big marketer out of Atlanta, and we started doing business with them. And uh, I dropped a mixtape in Atlanta, Blood of a Slay Heart of a King. What's crazy, I got a stupid response in Atlanta, nobody in South Carolina. You know, my nigga was fucking with it, but it didn't blow in South Carolina. But what's crazy, though, is here I am, 32 years old, with the hottest mixtape in Atlanta, opened up for Quavo. At, 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 at Kamal's 21 for his birthday. That's when I that's when I met Thug and Rich Homie that night. And the youngest gave me love, like, yo, OG, you really nice, boy, like that. I had a song called Tony Dorset. Run to the check, run to the check on Tony Dorset. Tony Dorset. Had the club going crazy. Thug gave me love. Uh, DJ Scream, the whole QC. From Q to to uh, we was at Lennox Mall all day with Offset and Takeoff and Pee Wee Longway. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, we was at Lennox at Pure and that Foot Locker. Ran into Johnny Cinco. We fought QC all day. No cap. Ask my nigga C Jinx. Ask my nigga y'all. Bushhead took over Atlanta in three months. Some situations happened, family issues. We had the record label 
ready to go in. We had everything on deck. I don't know what happened, but for some reason, shit got backed out on, you know, motherfuckers backed out on Bushhead and, and Black Bank, whatever we had going on. Um, then shit started going down here. My man Yada got locked up. Uh, Lord Tariq was like, yo, you know what, man? I ain't even rapping no more. I got to get some shit done for my family. And, you know, all of us following them, my man P.O. like, shit, I'm finna start driving trucks, so ain't nobody really thinking about the label no more. So, shit, I'm sitting here with this shit in my basement. I'm like, shit, I'm finna keep the label going, so, shit, I'm still pushing Black Bank to this day. Um, this 2000 and... 16, the police raid my studio at my mama's house. They put my mama in cuss, everything boom, boom, boom. They find a little ounce of weed in the studio. I come home, claim it, go to jail. I just feel it in my heart that these people around here didn't want me to have nothing. So uh now we get into the third life part. Twenty years ago, I had Moved to L.A. with my homeboy T.J. Gillespie out to the Bay Area, out in Stockton, California. And I met this guy in a wheelchair named General. And what's crazy, a nigga in a wheelchair ran the whole city. Like, what, on everything. They got a studio downtown, bodyguards, bitches. Perk, that was my first time seeing Perk. This like 04, 03. Oh, uh, my man. They had a label called To The Face Records. He had a brother named Tizzle. You know, I'll never forget them boys. They was real, real dope. And um, General looked out for me, put me on his, put me in his movie, or uh, put me on his mixtape. But our apartment burnt down in the bay, so I ended up having to move to Southern California with my cousin Jamaica and her boyfriend, Two Sides. Uh, shit wasn't all sweet like they said it was. When I got down there, they didn't have nowhere to go. Hell, we had to get a damn motel room and some shit. Boom, boom, boom. But my man Two Sides said he was fucking with this white guy named Jared that was best friends with Tupac Brother. And you know how niggas just be talking. But for some reason, you know, me and Two Sides, we don't roll. We don't did shit in Gavin together. Like, this nigga don't been in my city and we don't really ran it up together. So I know he ain't no cap if he say he know Tupac. Brother, he know too far, bro. So we go to this Irish bar, Old Haley's. Uh, we meet this white guy named Jared. Jared Morris, I'll never forget you, Hunker Belly. I love you to death, bro. Wherever you at and whatever you going through, know I love you, man. And I forgive you. Just know that. You know I love you, boy. But we met Jared. And the time Jared seen me say, boy, you look like a rapper. I say, what make you say that? He say, well, you look like you don't been through some shit. <laughs> I start laughing. You like spit something. I spit eight balls for him. He like, man, fuck that. I'm introducing you to Big Sight. I say, Big Sight? He say, yeah, Tupac, homeboy, Big Sight. I'm finna introduce you to Big Sight. I like, word, word. So he calling Big Sight. I talk to Big Sight on the phone. He like, word. And Jared say, you nice. I'm going to listen to you. I like, all right. Uh. Boom. And what's crazy is that I missed, I missed that meeting with Big Sight then, but like three days later, Mo Preen's wife called Jared. And like, yo, Jared, can you help? Mo Preen called Jared. And like, Jared, can you help my wife move into our new house? Jared called me in two sides, like, yo, can you help me move and Mo, you know, help me move my homegirl shit. He didn't tell me it was a two pop brother. So we go in the house, I see all these pictures of Pop, like family shit, like him with his aunts, him with babies. I seen the thug, like gold plaque on the wall. Authentic plaque.